evaluate the following. The opposite of 3 squared, negative 3 squared, negative 3 cubed, negative 3 to the fourth, and the opposite of 3 to the fourth. I've grouped these problems together because they all involve exponents and negative signs, and we need to make sure that we understand how all of these work, because a lot of students commonly make mistakes, and we don't want to make any mistakes. So first, I want to look at the first two and compare and contrast them. The opposite of 3 squared and negative 3 quantity squared. When we have an opposite sign, a negative sign in front of a number, and we think about that in the context of order of operations, that has the priority of multiplication because taking the opposite of something is effectively multiplying it by negative one. So if you look at this first problem, the exponent comes before the negation, before the negative. So we need to square the three first. So what this really means is we've got three times three and then we apply a negative on the outside. When we do this, we've got a negative times a positive, which gives us a negative, and we end up with negative nine. On the other hand, this other problem, negative three in parentheses squared, that exponent affects everything in the parentheses. That's saying we're taking negative three and we are squaring it or multiplying it by itself. So this gives us negative three times negative three, and in this case, a negative times a negative is a positive. We end up with positive nine. So these two expressions mean two different things. The second one says we're taking negative three and squaring it, we're multiplying it by itself. And the first one says we're taking three and squaring it, three times three, but we're gonna make the result negative. And it's imperative that you understand the difference between these two and you're able to evaluate expressions like these. Let's look at the other three and see how this all works out. The next one is negative three cubed. Now in this case, the exponent three affects everything in the parentheses, that negative three. This is telling us that negative three needs to be multiplied by itself three times. So this is negative three times negative three times negative three. As we go from left to right, negative three times negative three is positive nine. So this is nine times negative three, and a positive times a negative is a negative. So we've got negative 27 here. All right. If we look at negative three raised to the fourth power, it is basically the same thing, except there are four factors of negative three. So this is negative three times negative three times negative three times negative three. Now when we multiply these out, the negatives are all gonna cancel because we've got a negative times a negative, which will cancel, and then another negative times a negative, which will cancel. So they're gonna end up being positive in the end, but let's go through anyways, one step at a time. Negative three times negative three is positive nine. So we've got nine times negative three times negative three. When we multiply 9 times negative 3, that gives negative 27 times negative 3. A negative times a negative is a positive, and 27 times 3 is 81. So we're left with 81 there. And I want to point something out. Sometimes students think, they see the first two examples, just the first two, and they say, oh, if there's parentheses, it'll be positive. If there's no parentheses, it'll be negative. But that's not true. When we have different exponents, that affects things in different ways. So I don't want you to try and find a shortcut and say, well, the answer is going to be negative if this is true. You really need to make sure you're understanding how all of these symbols are working together to communicate what math we need to do. Now let's look at the last one, the opposite of 3 to the fourth power. In this case, the exponent 4 only affects the 3. So that really means 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. And then that negative is sitting out front to make the whole thing negative in the end. 
Now when we multiply 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, that's going to be 81, as we saw in the last one. But because we've got a negative out front, that answer is going to end up being negative 81. So these are five different examples of exponents that involve a negative sign somewhere and all the different things that can happen. Please make sure you understand this. And if you don't, ask questions, watch more videos online, talk to a friend, talk to me. Make sure you really understand what's going on and that all of these rules have sunk in. It's going to be really important as we move forward.